This tutorial will teach you how to make a bouncing ball using peg animation in Toon Boom Harmony 22. So we're going to start out with our basic file. I'm adding a color card in the background. On my drawing layer, I'm going to use the circle tool, the ellipse tool, to draw a circle. If you don't hold down shift, it'll make a uh, ellipse, but if you hold down shift, it'll make a perfect circle. Then I'm going to add to my circle layer a parent peg. And this parent peg is where we're going to store our keyframes. So I am going to extend the exposure. You can see the hotkey for that is F5. And that means my circle is now drawn on every frame from 1 to 24. So I'm going to move it up to the top. That's my first frame. Then. I'm going to add a bottom frame, right? And then I'll move it back up to the top again, but I can't see where it is, so I'm gonna extend this onion skin. So now I can see exactly where to put that last frame. Okay, and then I'm gonna adjust the positioning so that's exactly halfway in the middle there. All right, so if I crop this down to my 24 frames, now we have one second of bounce. Now there's no uh, ease in or anything like that on this yet. So I'm going to open up my functions and make that bigger. And then I want to fit this to the window. So I'm going to use the fit button right there. And then to adjust the positioning here, we want to use the uh, angle tool. And we're going to curve these. And the way that this curve works is it is our speed over time. So you can see our speed is slow, and then it gets really fast as the ball falls. That's what that's doing. So we're having our high parts be slow and fast as we approach the ground. So now I'm going to adjust my squash and stretch. You can see if I come in and try to adjust these on the uh, thing, it's going to do them all. It's going to do all the keyframes. So what I have to do is add frame, keyframes for my scale. So I click that keyframe button. That's going to add keyframes for scale at those three center keyframes, and that's where I want to have keyframing on my scale. And now I can come in and adjust those values, and it's not going to change every keyframe. All right, so I'm coming in, and I'm adjusting those values. I want to adjust both the X and the Y so that I can maintain my volume of the shape. Remember, that's an important concept of squash and stretch is the maintenance of volume. And then I have to fix my curve again, because when I added those keyframes, it changed that curve. So now I've got my curve back, my, escape, my falling and rising is correct again. And then I'm going to watch that. And now it looks a little bouncier, but it's not quite as bouncy as I want it to be. So I'm going to adjust this more. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit more, have that bottom hit much more squishy. And then I also want to do a rebound frame. So I want to come in and reverse the squash and stretch numbers so that that ball is elongated upward after it hits the ground. So we're just going to have that reverb frame. There we go. So now it's getting nice and squishy. I can slow it down by changing it to 12 frames per second. And now it really feels big and squishy like a yoga ball. It's a nice, slow, big bounce. And I'm also going I can choose to move these keyframes around a little bit so that we can make that bounce even a little bit more squishy. And then once I'm happy with those changes, once I've got it 
There we go to that last little bit of bounce. I can I finally once again clean that curve up just a little bit more. Make sure that those numbers are exactly where I want them to be to get the fall right. There we go. And now I'm ready to record this as, oh, first I'm gonna color it. Yeah, so we'll, let's use our paint bucket tool. I'm gonna select my drawing layer and go to tool properties. And I'm gonna use this to color every single frame of this ball at one time. So if I then select apply to all frames, I'm gonna make it blue and just click inside that circle, boom, there it is. I have a blue ball on every frame. All right, and now I'm ready to save my file and export it as an animated GIF. And I will send that out. And it's done. And then we can watch it. And there we go. That's how you can record a ball bounce using peg animation.